What's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video where last time we added this extension to the build for the sole purpose of just making our own central storage. So you must be wondering bits what are we working on in today's episode. So yep yeah, it is time we are working on oil. But there's a couple of milestones I need to quickly unlock before we go to tier 5 and that is improve melee combat and that is going to give us a Xenobasher. And what the Xenobasher does is it allows us to kill things a little quicker. Wait, Jace, watch out! It's coming right for us! Did you really think I was going to attack the doggo? You really thought I was going to attack that? You sick human beings. That is pure evil. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to unlock is hypertubes, because we can do some really cool things with these. Like how to make hyper cannons. Oh! Yep. So you can travel across the map. Check the link in the description to find out how to make these. Was it me or when I was flying through the hyper cannon then did it sound like I was constipated or I sat on the toilet? It sounded like I was pooping. I'm not going to lie. I was watching it back in the edit and I was like, it sounds like I'm having some serious toilet issues. Anyway, let's add the items into the uh, space elevator. Load it, seal it and bloody send it. And Bob's your uncle. We have now unlocked tier five and six. It's such a beautiful thing, this, isn't it? And wallop. Straight up into that sky. And then clouds. It could possibly be raining soon. Who knows? But also remember, if you're enjoying the videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to see future content. Also, if you want to see me work on these videos live, check out my Twitch because last week we started to work on these literally live so you guys can watch as I produce these and build what we build in these episodes. So if you want to see that, check the link in the description. And also, if you can't miss a live stream, check the VODs. The VODs are there so you can catch up and chill and play Satisfactory as well as watching it. Anyway, back to the hub, we can see that we've hit tier five and now tier six. So we've got oil processing, industrial manufacturing, alternative fluid transport, gas masks. We've also got expanded power infrastructure, jetpacks, monorail train technology. Yes, it's here and signal video coming very soon. We've already done one. I'm gonna do an advanced one. So keep an eye out for that. And also, Pipeline Engineering Mark II, so we can get Mark II pipes with Mark II pumps. The only thing we can unlock right now is oil processing, because it doesn't require any materials that we have not created. So we need mortars, we need um, encased industrial beams, and we also need steel pipes and copper sheets. So let me go and get them. Encased industrial beams, and launch. Boom. Oil processing complete. That means now, if we look inside of here, we can see our production. We've got refineries. We've got the new oil extractors. Uh, and yeah, the refineries are going to make some cool things. Because these have two inputs. They have a... As you can see, they have a item input and a liquid input as well. And then also on the output, they have a liquid output and a uh, conveyor output as well. So you can do a lot of cool things with this. We can make plastics, we can make petroleum cork, we can make residue, we can make fuel. Uh, and of course, if we go back into here and go into power, we, well, we've not unlocked it yet because I need to go into fuel production, which we do need some computers, I believe. Yes. And heavy modular frames. So they can wait for another episode. But today we need to get plastic, rubber, uh, up and running uh, and work on some of that stuff. Mainly just because I want to unlock the jetpack because that needs plastic and canisters and canisters are pretty easy. So, yeah. Saying that though, I do need you, which we don't have. Ah, heavy modular frames. Anyway, let's keep the focus at hand and work on the oil extraction and the start of the oil rig. Okay, so hear me out. I'll put a little blueprint down here. Well, I kind of a little bit of a blueprint, but a little bit of a one of the legs I want for an oil rig. And this is only one. So this is going to be kind of a large leg that's going to go up here and expand going well that way. And then we're going to do four big legs all together. 
But what we're going to do is we're going to pull all the oil in from over in the Spire Coast over there. We're going to bring it down, send it under the water, going up this leg into then the oil production area where everything's going to be up there. But we also discussed on stream as well, which might be cool, is the Golden Coast, which is way down on the West Coast, is we're going to bring that around here via train. A train's thing then going to come up onto this rock here from the side, unload the oil, then send that via uh, the, the pipes, and we're going to be bringing all the West Coast oil and the Spire Coast oil all into the oil rig, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, is just over 5,000 oil per minute. I could be wrong. Um... I have done the maths. I just don't have the workout with me at the minute. Um, but that is the whole plan for the actual oil rig. So what I've done here, and I'm going to quickly show you how to do this as well, is how to quickly do a circle. This is going to be in a video that is going to be coming up pretty soon, which is an explain video. And it's just creating a circle just via walkway crossings. Uh, and I need plates. God damn it. All right, plate acquired. Let me get back to this. So what I want to do is grab yourself a walkway, just like this. Go to the edge of where you want to go, uh, and then just build. Hold control here, and then you can start to see it starts to rotate like this. Move it by one tick, so it kind of just snaps to one side, whichever direction you want to turn the work, have your circle. So I'm going to have it go into the right, and then just hold control and just walk and snap to the edge like this. And as you can see, you're starting to make a slow little turn. Once you have got the turn you want, you can even grab yourself a foundation and just snap this to the middle like this. Snap it to the middle of that one, to that one, to that one, to that one, and so on. And as you can see, you start to make a little bit of a circle. But as you can see, the Z fighting is a little bit aggressive. So go inside your customizer, go to materials, go to asphalt foundation and change that to asphalt and as you can see the z fighting is not as intrusive anymore um just kind of figure out and try to grab the bits you don't want and like if you don't want these bars and stuff so figure that out and you can play around with it but that's how i did that big circle here and we don't actually need this here because that was just an example of how to do them so when we, once we've got this circle we're actually going to go around the actual walkway like this and we're placing a wall directly on these little black marks here so the center of the wall on each of these black marks and we're doing that all the way around until we have the whole circle uh, constructed and there we go i've now added the whole circle and it's like a big massive canister kind of thing but i've also created the second one way over there which is the second leg so you can kind of see the scale of this so you can you can kind of see how large this is going to be and this is only two legs like i'm not going to put the other two down yet because at the minute i don't know how far the machines are going to go back so as you can see i've been a little bit busy i've added a little bit of structural design and some framework to it so we come up with this this is just got some beams on there it's got pillars it's got some signs with the emission of three to make it look like lights also some uh framed foundations and as you can see all put together it works kind of well but there's one little thing about it that's kind of little voice inside of my, my back of my, my head is just going it doesn't look right. And that is these beams right here. I don't know if I'm liking them just yet, but I'm going to leave them there just in case with any future design, we kind of work towards this. It blends pretty well. And then I've created this open place here because this is obviously where some of the machines are going to go and all that kind of stuff. And then we're going to start playing around with different layers and different tiers and making it more look like an oil rig. And then obviously underneath, I've now added some uh, support beams uh, and a bit of a spine down the center. What I've also done as well is I've also added the oil wells and the pipes and connected them all up with power. So as you know, we've got impure ones that have overclocked to 150 uh, cubic meters of liquid per minute. And the reason I'm doing that is because four uh, impure lines are actually going to go into a Mark II pipe. But unfortunately, we don't have Mark II pipes right now. And the reason we don't have Mark II pipes is because we've not unlocked Pipeline Engineering Mark II, which requires plastic and also heavy modular frames. And for me to make heavy modular frames, I need plastic. And for us to make plastic, we need oil. So we have to use Mark I pipes to start with to create 
oil, rubber, and all that kind of stuff. So as you can see, I have utilized all of the oil that is in the Spire Coast. And then between the Spire Coast and the Titan Forest, we have this oil over here as well. Yes, and as you can tell, there are some very, very smooth curves, which will come in an explained video very soon. So yeah, we're grabbing this oil from this location. And at the side of the base, we're grabbing this oil over here, meaning this one. And then everything comes along these pipes, merging together to make sure that when I upgrade these pipes, they're all going to be at Mark II uh, efficiency, which means 600 per the line. And then because we are building an oil rig, I kind of want to hide the pipes that are going towards it because you don't see that. The oil is going to be getting pumped up from underneath the rig. So what I've decided to do is take it so far and then take it under the water. And then it's kind of hiding it and it's just not making it as visible. And then I stated before, it goes up this leg of the rig. And then it's going to come to this location right here where we're going to be making residue oil with a byproduct of resin, which is then going to go into... Um, plastic and rubber uh, and then that is where is what we're aiming for because obviously we can't do fuel or anything yet until later on okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a refinery because yes there are alternates out there i know this and we could go straight for the alternates but i'm playing it super slow just so the people who are new to satisfactory don't get discouraged and because this can get a little bit crazy when it starts going to oil especially if you're not used to playing these sort of games so we're going to stick with a basic recipe and then in later episodes we're going to upgrade to some alternates and start going on a bigger scale so the recipes we're going to be using is the plastic and residue and also the rubber and residue and they are very very different in making products of course but there's a slight difference in each output of this so if we look at the plastic recipe it takes 30 crude oil per minute and as you know we have 300 in our line currently until we upgrade our pipes to mark 2 where we'll then have 600 so we have 300 crude oil in our lines which does mean we can put 10 of these machines down because obviously 30 times 10 is 300 that's going to give us uh, 200 plastic on the output and also uh, 100 uh, heavy oil residue we can't do anything with heavy oil residue right now because we can't make fuel well we can make fuel it's just that we can't do anything with it so I think what we're going to make is we are going to send the heavy oil residue to make this. It's just that the fuel is going to get stored until we unlock in the hub um, the fuel generators and also the uh, packers. So we can actually pack up this and use it for jetpack fuel. Uh, and then also we have the rubber, which we're going to put down 10 of these. But as you can see, this is a little bit different. This sends out an extra 10 heavy oil residue per minute. So this is going to be giving us 200 uh, heavy oil residue and 20, uh, 20, uh, 200 rubber, uh, which is going to go into 10 machines as well. So in total, we do need to put 20 um, refineries down in each line. So let's first of all, let's find out where we're going to go. And I think we're just going to go um, into this location right here. Um, I think about maybe 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 we put a gap all the way along um i don't actually know i do want to kind of keep the pipes exposed as well just so we can see that industrial kind of feel if that makes sense because it is going to be an oil rig at the end of the day and although you can't really see it just yet and especially for the new players who might not uh, understand what's going on here as well is all this is gonna get like extremely big later on uh for those obviously that know about satisfactory it's gonna get rather big uh, it doesn't look large at the minute, but it will do, trust me. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 10 of these in a single line. So all these along here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that is that done. Placed, done, and dusted. Next thing we need to do is we need to get our um, pipes down. And I highly advise, highly advise, because as of recently, I have kind of figured out what's been going on with the pipes uh, and that is due to these connectors right here i have reported it to the devs uh, and hopefully we can get a fix on it because what is happening is is if we grab ourselves a pipe like this line that up just like we normally do connect that up to there and then bring that out here and just like you normally would is bring this out and then attach your junction to said well 
There, where it needs to go. Look what happens now. So as you can see, the pipe goes in and look at the orange line. The orange line is going halfway through the connector. Same with this side. And it's causing a bit of an issue. I don't know where it is, but that is actually a bug, which hopefully gets fixed in, in down the line. But this kind of thing here is actually affecting the flow rate of your pipes. And if you ever find out any issues, this is more likely why it is. But if you look at this one, because we placed this first, instead of placing this on top of the pipe, look at, the, look at where it's connected this time. You see where it's connected? It's connected to the actual entrance. So always make sure, just to be on the safe side so you don't have any of these, issue, these issues, connect the pipe to the connector and not the connector on top of the pipe. Right, without, without the way, let's connect all of these up. That's why we're going to put down the junctions first. And then we're going to connect the pipes. And then connect them to the machines. And then that is our input done. And now we can just focus on the output, which, as we know, is going to have two products. We are going to have um, plastic coming out, and we're also going to have heavy oil residue. So first of all, let's work on where our uh, mergers are going to go, which is if we just get some mergers... Um, we do need to put a little bit of a gap because we do need to think about the pipes that are coming out as well. Uh, so I'm more than likely looking at going to place them about here on this line. And then we're just going to take this all the way along like we normally do. And then because we are bringing out 200 per line, we're going to use a Mark III belt because obviously that holds 270. And then just connect this all the way down uh, to the front end down here. And then I'm going to use Mark 1 belts all the way along. Oh, that's wrong. God damn it. Bits! What are you doing, sir? Connect you back up. Hopefully all the rest are, are, are fine. Connect you up there. Mark 1 into there. Mark 1 into there. And then put a Mark 3 into each of them. And then I can crack on with the rest. And then hopefully there's no other mistakes down here. And then we're going to connect a pipe up. I'm just going to bring that pipe out there. I'm actually going to make sure that this becomes purple because I like to color code all my pipes uh, visually just so people can see from a distance what's in the pipe. So obviously purple for residue, uh, blue for water, black for oil, all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new color swatch and we've already got blue for water. So let's make this one. And this one is just going to be uh, purple for residue. And then we're just going to grab that hex code right there and just put you into there. And then click, and then it's the same. Select color. Then I'm going to right-click on this, and then make sure I select pipes. And now I select pipes. Any pipe that I place, as you can see right here, is going to go purple. Oh, God. That's a little little bit too pink. Uh, let's kind of change that. That's a little, little... Wait. Yeah, you're a little too pink. I need you to be a little bit darker. Wait, I'm pressing the wrong keys here now. Edit. Darker purple, please. And this should automatically change the pipe color because I'm changing this swatch. There we go. Boom. Is that still a little bit too purple? I feel like that's a still that's still a little bit too purple for me. Let's make it darker. I feel like it's not matching what it's showing here. I think the game's lying to me a little bit. There we go. That just went that's a little bit better. That's a bit better. So yeah, let's remove that because that clipping is kind of doing my heading. I do need to paint this first one, though, on that one. And then let's take this all the way down here. But what I'm going to do, it's going to be a bit of a pain. Um, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this, because like I just stated a minute ago with the, the pipe connectors, uh, there is a bit of an issue. So I've got to kind of do it the way this way and then kind of repeat and delete some stuff. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take this all the way along. Like this. like so and then i'm going to put the connectors down make sure they're lined up hold control and make sure they're snapping and then once you've done that is it sounds annoying i know but then delete the pipes uh again so then we just have some floating connectors and then all we need to do is just connect these back up like this so then as we can see we're not going to have any of the pipes actually going through the connector itself it's connected up to where it needs to be connected and I know it's a bit of a pain, uh, but trust me, just please do this if you uh, if you don't want any, any hassles with your pipes. Um, there will be obviously some people who don't believe this is real, but we have had confirmation. So please uh, make sure that uh, you do this. 
uh, it will uh, it will help a lot. Trust me. And then just connect the pipes to these entrances for the outputs. Oh, that went a bit wonky. Then the next thing you need to do is just connect it all up with power, set up the recipes, and make sure you select the plastic and heavy oil recipe. And as you can see, we already have plastic sitting on the line waiting to go to its destination, and the pipes are full with residue oil. But there is something you need to know, and make sure you make a note of this, because if you have one thing not working, the other thing will not work as well. So inside your production or inside your refinery, you're going to see your plastic and heavy oil residue. Once this plastic fills up, it will stop producing heavy oil residue and it works in roundabouts. It will work if the heavy oil residue is not being sent to a destination and just sitting in the lines, it will stop making plastic. So make sure you take note of that. So what we need to do now is we're just going to set up the plastic to be stored and we're going to send the residue oil into some more refineries to make fuel. Right, so then what we're going to do is we need to put down our, well, refinery in a, say, around there. Is that too close? I don't think it is. Connect you up to that. And then this is sending 100 residue oil. So we need to make this to be overclocked to 100. It's currently taking 60. So, if we put a power shard in there and put two in, put that at 166.666, enter, that should give us 100 fuel per minute, I think. Correct! That's what we need. 100, 100 heavy oil... Yeah, which is 166 166.666. Which is going to give us 100 heavy residue oil, which is going to consume that whole line, which is going to output 66.666 fuel. Uh, maybe we'll play around with this later, but at least the input's correct, but I don't like that number on the output. So maybe we'll play around with it. We'll see what we need, but that is a horrible number, and I don't want to play with that. But for now, it works with the heavy residue oil. And it also going to make sure that we don't back up in here with residue oil. But we do need to get the fuel being sell sent somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put that into some buffers. So we need to go into uh, la, 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 organization, scroll down and go to a fluid buffer. Damn it. I don't have a goddamn frame. <laughs> right. Frames acquired. Let me put down some fluid buffers. Um, we're just going to put like these to here. Will that actually swing around there? Let's have a look. Pipe. Are you going to swing in there? Oh, you are. Okay. So we're just going to put some of these in a line just like this. Yes, I know it's going to be a pain in the butt, but at the end of the day, we all had to do this at the beginning. So I'm just going to line this up just like that. I'm going to grab myself a pipe and it's going to come around the back. You're going to go into the front, around the back, into the front. And into there, just like this. I just jumped way too far. You're going to go into there. You're going to go into there. You're going to go into there. So then the fuel that is just going to be made is just going to get stored into these. And if, uh, for example, these storage containers fill up, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into here, uh, full pipe network, and flush that whole thing. That will then flush everything, including these pipes here. So, and then we can just kind of keep everything running. It's going to be more manual work, but... It's not going to last for long, trust me. But then what we need to do is we need to create this whole setup for the rubber. But the only difference is, is we're going to be uh, putting down the 10 refineries like we are going to do. It's just going to it's going to be outputting 200 um, heavy residue oil. Uh, so we're going to need to put down two of these. Uh, and you'll see that in a second by the snap of my little fingers. And there we go. Well, that was more like a pop, not like a click. But still, the rubber is now up and running and being stored into the container. So as you can see, like I said, it's exactly the same as what the plastic is. The only difference is this side has the... Well, the rubber has two um, refineries that is making uh, fuel compared to the plastics one. So remember to check out my other content here. You can see I do some other satisfactory stuff. Or if you want to check out my other stuff, check out my explained video down here, which is how to do hypertubes. And as always, keep smiling.